Well, good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> welcome to worship. I want to say a special word of welcome or a welcome home choir. It's good to have you back up here at the front. It's good to have the visual, right, church? It's good. I would also like to say a special word of welcome for those who are here with family or who, the, who are here to celebrate graduations. Uh, we are grateful that you're with us. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for those who join us online, at home. Thank you for extending the reach of our sanctuary and reminding us that worship is so much bigger even than we can see around us. We have um, a couple of announcements, and one is, so yes, this morning the choir is moving forward. Our COVID team met earlier, and the exciting thing this morning is we are shifting back to congregational singing. So this morning, those in the church, please sing. Our scripture says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, and John Wesley says, if you can't sing well, sing loudly. Um, so we are we are asking, that said, we are keeping our current protocol, COVID protocols, that was a difficult word, uh, keeping those currently in place, and so we are asking that we continue to wear masks this morning in worship. Our COVID team will meet, so stay tuned for other updates um, concerning the most recent release from the CDC. Um, but I know that there are much more important things to talk about in church than the CDC. So our young adult ministry has been meeting, and our young college, college and up-ish group, young professionals, um, they're going to be at the beach today. So that is 1 o'clock today if you're interested. Caitlin Fuller has been organizing our young adults. Thank you, Caitlin. If you have questions, she's back there um, and has been doing a really great job of communicating. We also have this evening, if you are 4th through 7th grade, we've got, and I'm looking at you, we have a Zoom call game night. Dakota has been doing a great job of making those interactive. I know, Reese, you've had fun on those, right? Yeah, a lot of scavenger hunts and things like that. So that is happening. Also, this Saturday at 10 a.m., if you did not receive an invitation yet, we still have some extras, or if there's somebody else you'd like to invite, we want to celebrate the gift of community that is special when women support other women. Um, so what we're saying is from pigtails, from girls in pigtails to women in walkers, we want to celebrate and just be together. It's going to be very, very simple. We're going to have tables and some fruits, and we're going to have cold drinks, um, lemonade, tea sort of drinks. Don't get too excited. Uh, but we, um, but we want to sit around. We want to have a moment to pray together and see each other's faces and simply just say, hey, we're here, we value you, there's a gift in being present. Um, and so we're going to do that this Saturday. Kids are welcome, we will be on the playground, we are going to have some fruit snacks for kids, um, part of the gift of being there. And then next Sunday in the church, da -da -da, is the celebration of Pentecost Sunday. So we invite you, especially if you're coming in person, wear red. If you're worshiping from home, wear red and send us a picture. Um, wear red, wear fiery colors. Um, and if, you, um, if you're also here, we're going to be celebrating our confirmation students next Sunday. So we will all be renewing our faith um, and celebrating that special season. And then last but not least, we do have a new member class coming up. So if you'd like to know more about the church um, or more about Methodism, let us know. Um, but let's take a moment, let us center in Christ, let us remember that this day is the Lord's, that we are God's people, and that God is present. Let us worship the Lord.
Lord. Thomas and the rest of the, the disciples 
he hung around for like at least maybe about 40 days, maybe a little bit longer. Did y'all know that? Church, did you guys know that? So here's the thing though, is Jesus, like when you look around, do you see the physical body of like this, the, the incarnate physical Jesus still in the world today? I mean, symbolically, like if you look around, everybody in the church wave, do me a favor, church wave, choir wave, yes. This is the embodiment, like we are the body of Christ now. But when Jesus came back from the dead and was like, I'm resurrected, I'm here, he wasn't there forever. So this is the story that reminds us like, oh, that's what happened. Jesus went back to heaven. It's kind of a, I mean, it's an important story for the sake of like making sense of it all. But that moment for the followers of Jesus must have been kind of weird. Like they were talking to him and they were like, Jesus is now the moment. He does look like he's flying into the, yeah, because like part of the story, like he flew up into the clouds and then we just assumed that it was like this like ah, moment and he just like whoop, went into heaven. And it was really weird because the disciples are standing around and they're like, like, I don't know if that happened. Exactly. They're looking up and they're like, what's going on? What's going on? Like, look up, like, all right, church, it would have looked, hold on, it would have looked like this. All right, church, look up like you're looking for Jesus. I know, it would have looked like that. And then suddenly this guy, appeared among them and was like, what are you guys looking for? What are you looking for? Like, this, this Jesus who went into heaven is going to come back one day, but you have a mission here and now. So Jesus said, here, excuse me, excuse me, we're missing something on this table because it's something that is coming. Before Jesus went to heaven, he said, all right, I'm leaving, but I promise you that you are going to receive power through the Holy Spirit. And you are going to be my witnesses. You're going to go out from this place and tell other people the story of my love and grace and story. And so the ascension story also is the promise that what was coming in our next story, anybody want to take a guess? It has to do with fire. It's part of why we have fire on our altar on a regular basis. Jesus flew into the sun. Mm -hmm. Possibly in that story, but that's not what we're talking about right now. I mean, Jesus lit a candle. Maybe. There was, Jesus said that I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to be with you. Because God is always going to be with you. In the Pentecost story, we're going to talk more about that next Sunday. But as Jesus went up to heaven, God also promised, Jesus promised that God would also still come down so that we would never be without God. So we put, and that Pentecost story says that the Holy Spirit came with fire to give them power to do what God called them to do. So, next Sunday we're going to continue today's story of that Jesus went up to heaven, gave us the mission to continue being the body of Christ, and that the Holy Spirit also comes and gives us all that we need to make that happen. Make sense? Kind of. It's also kind of a kind of a unique story. So, an ancient, ancient story. That's right. All right, guys. We are gonna pray, and we're gonna we're gonna thank God for Bible stories that teach us the story of God. Um, and then we are, and then you guys are gonna go to River Kids if you want to go to River Kids with Miss Dakota. Okay. All right. So we are gonna pray. Will y'all repeat after me? Ready. Pray, dear God, thank you for the Bible and stories about Jesus. Thank you for the church that teaches us these stories too. And thank you for fire and the Holy Spirit that gives us strength. Send us, use us, we love you Jesus, amen. All right, guys, you can go with Miss Dakota or y'all can go back to your seats, whatever y'all would like to do, okay?
Tell me that looks so easy. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your gifts and worship with us. We have the honor and joy this morning of celebrating our seniors and our graduates today. Um, we know that not everybody can be here with us in person, and so some of these will be pictures up on the screen, um, but I do see Zach is with us this morning. And so what I'd like to do, if it's okay, and family, y'all can, if you're not comfortable with this, I'd like to, let's read off the list of our graduates, and then Zach, if you'd be comfortable, or if any of our other graduates or family are comfortable and would like to come forward, we'll, um, we'll do a blessing together. Is that okay? All right. All right, so graduates that we are celebrating this morning, um, we celebrate Colby Allen. Um, this is Bonnie and Jim's grandson, also son of Scott and Christy. Um, and he's graduating from Creekside High School and will be enlisting in the Coast Guard. Amen. All right, we also celebrate, and here with us this morning, is Zachary Michael Bradley, grandson of Diane here in the choir. Um, and he's graduating salutatorian of Mandarin High School and will be pursuing a degree in engineering from the University of Florida. Amen. Yeah. I told the 9 o'clock service, I'll forgive the UF part. But, uh, we also celebrate James Cashman, son of, T, uh, son of Lee and Tom, who's graduating from Duval Charter High School out of Bay Meadows. We're very proud of James. We also celebrate Malachi Moore. This is Malachi's senior year. Um, Malachi is Ashley's son. We celebrate him and we are grateful um, for his time at Lee High School and among us. And we'll continue to pray for Malachi too. We also celebrate Hannah Stomps. Um, this is Dorsey Ann, Dorsey Ann, yeah, Dorsey Ann, who is our membership secretary. Um, Dorsey Ann Reigns, this is her granddaughter. Um, and Hannah is graduating from Christ Church Academy and will be pursuing a criminology degree from FSU. Um, so yay for Hannah. <laughs> We celebrate Kevin Jensen, again, grandson of Diane. Um, Kevin has graduated from Army Basic Training. And so we continue, continue to, the, the note we're sending him says, all right, Kevin, we're proud of you and we're gonna keep praying for you. Um, so prayers for Kevin. We also celebrate Sandy Allen. Again, this is granddaughter of Bonnie Allen and the Allen family. This is Colby's sister. So that family has a double graduation to celebrate. Um, Sandy has her bachelor's degree in accounting from Lisa McRae College um, and will have the dream of serving as the head tennis pro at the Beach Mountain Club. Um, so that's her, I know, ooh, fancy, so exciting. We also celebrate A.J. DeSalvo, who's the son of Lee and Joe DeSalvo. He's graduating from the University of Texas in Austin. His degree is applied math and he'll be commissioned into the U.S. Army as a second lieutenant infantry officer. Um, so prayers for, prayers for AJ. And Colby also asked that we pray, especially around August, um, when, and, and this is for the whole church, we're, we're celebrating these graduates now, and also around August when jobs kick in or military service kicks in or college kicks in, let's remember to also be praying for them and their families as well. Um, we, still, we celebrate Aaron Feigart, who is the son of Amanda and Larry, who's graduating from UNF with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Digital Media. We also celebrate Will Goodwin, who's the grandson of Joanne and Rich, um, who graduated from University of Louisville with a Bachelor of Arts in Music. Will is a cello player um, and is pursuing his master's degree to be a music teacher, so need more of those. Kyle Litwin is the son of Amy and Mike. He's graduating from Wentworth Institute of Technology with a degree in mechanical engineering. Um, and as you can see from the picture, Kyle is quite the basketball, or sorry, baseball player. Um, and so we celebrate this season for him as well. Um, we also celebrate Lacey. Lacey, who sings in the choir, uh, Lacey went back to school, or has finished her degree, has worked really hard. And so her master's degree is in computing and information science, sciences from UNF, so we celebrate Lacey this morning, as well as Ty Strong, um, who got a, a degree in inter interdisciplinary studies um, and has already started his master's degree in executive leadership from Liberty University. Uh, so we celebrate Ty and celebrate Lacey. And then we have two students that graduated with their law degrees. 
So we celebrate Jackie Byer, if you know Carol Byer, um, Jackie is Carol's daughter, um, who graduated from Wake Forest University and will very soon start working for the state attorney's office here in Jacksonville. And then Ashton Hampton is the stepdaughter of Joy Hampton, who is our facilities manager. Joy works in the church office, and so her stepdaughter Ashton has graduated from the University of Florida. So y'all just missed each other. Uh, she graduated from University of Florida with a master's in mass communications and her law degree, and is getting ready to take her multi-state and Florida bar exams. So, y'all, that's a lot of folks in our church. That's a lot to celebrate. Can we do like a collective amen for all of them? A moment of celebration. And then, and so Zachary, if you will come forward, and if your family wants to come down as well, Diane, if you'd like to come forward. Do we have other family or graduates that are here with us? Bonnie, you're good? All right, so we are going to pray for, oh, Zach, I left your card up here. Um, we are grateful for you. And I also want to just name that, you know, for teachers and for those in the education system and for our students, these have been a especially hard couple of years. And so, Zachary, we know that you have worked extra hard this year. We are incredibly proud of you um, and grateful as well. So, church, if you would do me a favor, we, as we, here we go, Zachary. Thank you. And so, as we, as we bless you, we're also going to bless all of our graduates. And so, church, if you will just do me a favor and kind of lift a hand, lift a hand of blessing, let us pray. Gracious Lord God, you are a wondrous creator. Before any of us were born, you knew us. You have given us the gift of reason and learning. And so we pray your blessings, especially here on Zach. We pray your blessings on all of the graduates that were named and celebrated. Um, Lord, too, as Diana stands with us, we pray for Kevin in this next season for him as well. Um, so we pray the joy of graduating and ending a new season. And also, Lord, we pray for the uncertainty that comes with any transition. Um, so for graduates and for seniors that are with us and part of our church, Lord, we lift them to you and ask that you would guide one step at a time. That especially in the fall, you would continue to be with them. That you would send your spirit of guidance and peace. And remind us, Lord, that to learn and grow is a call for all of us. And so we thank you for Zach's presence. We thank you for the gifts you've given him and pray that you would continue to bless and keep him from here and evermore. So too, for all our graduates and all of God's people said, amen. All right, another round of celebration for Zach and others. And we celebrate, yeah, we have the whole family celebration. Um, I also want to, I know that there have been other prayer requests and I know that graduates, are not the only ones who experience seasons of uncertainty um, or challenge. And so folks, what I'd like to do is just take a moment of prayer for all of us to come before God, um, to be held, to be encountered, and to be blessed. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for seasons of celebration where we get to join hearts together. We thank you for signs of new life that keep coming. And I pray for each person in this church community this morning. For spaces where hearts are, are weary, Lord, send your strength. For spaces where futures are uncertain or where we are in that gray middle ground where we're just not quite sure what's coming next, Lord, may you guide us and hold us and keep us. Lord, for those in our church that are celebrating anniversaries or are coming through these doors with joyful hearts, Lord, thank you. And we lift that and we ask that that joy and praise would echo throughout the congregation. Thank you for the gift of celebration. Lord, we pray for these last couple of weeks, especially for those who are teachers. We pray for continued strength for those that work in the medical industry. Lord, we pray um, for all folks that are in jobs that are just worked over hard and tired. May you give rest. May you give peace. May you give strength. As Jesus was lifted, so too, Lord, may you lift our hearts and lift us, that we would focus on what is of your kingdom and not anything else. Lord, we pray for the hope of the word of Jeremiah to, to trust that you have promises for us, promises for future, promises for hope, 
promises for good in the come. And so we pray for, for others among us in our community. We pray for our church. We pray for the neighbors that we have not yet met. We pray for those in, that are in our city just a few blocks away. May you continue to guide and keep us, Lord, that we would not only follow you, but also be your apostles sent out to carry your news, empowered by your Holy Spirit, given your call. Lord Jesus, may you call us and guide us through good, through uncertain, through the scary, through the hard, through the exhausting. Lord, you're God. And we know that you hold on to our smallness. So in your name we pray. In your name we echo as you taught us and join our voices saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we invite you to offer up and give your gifts and tithes to God. In all things, we put God first, even in finances. Um, we have offering plates here in the aisle if you'd like to drop your offering in person. We also have online giving, and we also have folks that have continued to write checks and, and mail them in the mail. And so, indeed, let us continue worshiping God in all that we do.
All right, I gotta say it. It's really, really good to sing again. <laughs> it's really, really good to sing again. <laughs> And, um, and yeah, in the meantime, choir, y'all singing on our behalf, y'all have done a really incredibly wonderful job. And I am so grateful, and I brag about y'all all the time. Whenever I say, oh yeah, Riverside Park, we have amazing music. <laughs> but thank you as well, choir, for leading us in the meantime. Our scripture this morning, we continue our, our series, we're calling Lifelines, um, for the month of May. We asked folks to send in the scripture that roots your life, grounds your life in the abundant life of Christ, um, kind of the Bible passage that you come to again and again. And this morning's scripture was sent in by three separate people, Laura Manello, Kim Renee, and Christine Grady. All three of them said, this is my life verse. Um, and so I invite you, oh, we do have readings. We had, a, we had enough people send in scriptures that we have a reading a day for the entire month of May. We're posting them online on the church's Facebook. We have printed copies in the narthex. Um, but it's been really neat to see the, the scripture passages that have connected people, um, and especially like in this morning's case, that have really touched the lives of different people. Um, so hear the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah, or came to the people in exile from Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks to you. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I have plans for you. They're good plans, too. They're plans for a future with hope. They're, they're not plans for harm. They're plans for good. As a matter of fact, it says part of the promise and the, the strength of this verse is, is when we seek God, God is going to be there. When we, when we are praying and we're seeking and we're asking God, it's not like God really gets a kick out of playing hide and seek. God is saying, no, I'm, I'm here. When you seek me, I'm here. I'm not going to leave you hanging. God is a God that is dependable and trustworthy and with us no matter what. That is an incredible, incredible promise. It's a powerful word at any point in time. But it's also an especially powerful word when you remember, if you, were, if you recall, I said this is the word of God that came to Jeremiah to the people when they were where? In exile. This is not like, this is not like, hey, it's your senior year and everything is going great and you are prepared and you know when all of the tests are and everything is good and you have all of your friends and life is perfect. It's not that kind of glorious, everything is good and then God just comes in and is like, hey, not only is everything in your life perfect, but I have plans that your life is going to continue being perfect. It's great. <laughs> These are people who have been ripped out of their home, sent away. They're separated from their church, their temple, their religious structure, their customs. They are in the middle of nowhere, and they're going, hey, what's going on, God? We thought you had plans for us. We thought you had us covered. We, we, we're, trying, we're, we're trying to figure out what's going on, and we just don't know what's happening. And Jeremiah comes along. Now keep in mind, there are lots of prophets that are talking with the people at the time, and a lot of them are saying, ah, I'll give it five minutes, and then everything will be fine, and we'll be back home, and everything will be normal. Jeremiah is the prophet who has to come in and like be the honest one and say, y'all, this is going to be a while. We're going to be in exile for a long time, like at least 70 years a long time. Like, in fact, I'm, I'm telling you, God told me to tell you to go ahead and like, Plant a whole garden because your garden is going to come to fruition. In fact, you might as well build houses because we're going to be here for a while. This is a frustrating season for the people of Israel. This is a frustrating season for the people. And God, God's word to them is, it's going to be a while, but like, don't give up. I have plans for you. 
Which on one hand is incredibly comforting to know that like, God has us, it's good. But if I was one of the Israelites at that time, my response would be like, okay, cool, God, I'm really glad that you have plans, but what are they? Right? Like, but that's, that's just how we are. Like, when things get frustrating or uncertain, like, humanity is really, really bad at uncertainty, aren't we? We're really, really bad at not knowing what's coming next. We're really, really uncomfortable when the, the rules change and when we're out of our habits and rhythms. We're really bad when we don't know what's going on in those spaces of uncertainty. Now, I, I would love to be able to tell you that, like, hey, read the Bible because once you're a Christian and you believe in Jesus, like, there is no more uncertainty because we can always be certain that God is with us. Now, it is true that God is always with us, but in my own life, in my own faith, I can tell you, I do believe in God, and I love God, and God has never let me down, and also there are still lots of times where my faith walks me through seasons of uncertainty, and that's really hard, and it's scary, and it's uncomfortable. That we see it in the same way in our ascension story. When the disciples are gathered, the disciples, they have followed Jesus. They're convinced that he's the, the Messiah that has come to set everything right in the world. That Jesus is going to make everything better. They're following Jesus, listening to his teachings. They're even excited for the powers that be to kind of like come crumbling down. And they're excited because they're like, great, the injustice is going to come down and we are going to be on top. And the Romans that persecuted us before, like they're going to get what's coming to them. We're excited. And then Jesus was crucified and died. And they were like, what? uncertain. Now we know, hopefully you know the story, that while they're grieving the loss of their leader, what was actually happening was the power of resurrection was at work. That in, in, in our story, like the story of the empty tomb, what ended up happening was a victory far greater than simply the victory of the, the Jews over the Romans in the city of Jerusalem. We know and can say that the victory of God was one of victory of life over death. The victory of what would hold us back uh, was, was torn down, that when the stone was rolled away, like the guilt and shame that holds us back as people is forgiven, and there's a way set forward, and like we can look at that story and say, wow, God was doing so much more than they knew in that moment. But that's what they knew in the moment, was that their leader had died, and they were grieving, and had no idea what they're going to do with their life next. So then Jesus comes back, right? Jesus shows up in that room with the disciples. They're gathered in Jerusalem. They're freaked out. They're scared. And Jesus shows up and goes, peace be with you. I'm resurrected. Here's the wounds. You see? I'm here. Peace be with you. God is the God of power and resurrection. And then, you know, Thomas did his thing where he was out and Jesus came back even in that space of doubt. Like, Jesus still showed up. And then the disciples are excited again because they're like, sweet. God is a God of resurrection. This is even better than we thought. And then they look at Jesus in our ascension story and go, all right, Jesus, is now the time when you're going to kick butt and win and we're going to be on top? And Jesus says, that's not for you to know. Oh, man. I, almost, I would almost rather somebody tell me no than tell me not right now. Or even worse than not right now, like, I got it. Don't worry about it. Mm. My husband, he still does that. When we first got married, um, he did it a lot more. And, and I just, at this point, I've just learned to be like, okay, fine. But, you know, early marriage when, like, you know, it's all about knowing everything that's going on, I would, I would ask him, he would go out and run an errand or do something or, you know. I, I've actually learned, he's a morning person where I'm not. And so prior to having kids, I would sleep in on a Saturday morning and he would go to breakfast and I had no idea. And there were days where he'd come home and I would say, oh, hey, where did you go? And he would look at me and he'd say, don't worry about it. I know, right? Do you feel that? You're like, what do you mean, don't worry? Like, I'm not worried, but like, now that you say that, I'm worried. Like, what do you mean, don't worry about it? That's basically what Jesus said to the disciples. They're like, is this the time that you're going to set everything right and it's going to be awesome? And Jesus says, don't worry about it. It's not for you to know. God knows. Just trust God. Essentially, that was what Matt was saying to me. He was like, just trust me. And I'm like, I don't I trust you, but like, I would much rather know everything that's going on. I would much rather have the answers. Like, come on. <laughs> I'd much rather, come on. And God is saying here, trust me. 
I got it. Don't worry about it. And then, if that wasn't uncertain enough, <laughs> Jesus like goes back into heaven and the disciples in their confusion, I love, by the way, that our stained glass glory image in our church is a whole bunch of really confused people. I think there's something kind of beautiful about the grace of that moment that they're like, wait, what? What's going on? And that moment where they're still like, okay, Jesus went up. When, when are you coming back? What? Like, cool miracle. That was funny. But like, come back. And then in God's grace, like, and I was, again, in my mind, all the disciples are like, mm -hmm. and then the guy who shows up in the white robe, I really hope he showed up and went, boom! And they all went, what? And he showed up and he's like, hey guys, hey Galileans, like silly Galileans, what are you looking for? And they're like, Jesus went up, he's coming back down, right? And you know, and that's that's the truth. And they're like, yeah, he's gonna come back, but like, we don't know when, we don't know. So basically from that point until Jesus comes back, the whole story of the church is living into this space of uncertainty. You know? We've just gotten used to it because it's been so long that we don't wake up every morning expecting the return of Jesus. Um, but still, there are so many moments where faith walks us through uncertainty. So many of those moments where God looks at us and says, you don't have to know. I got it. This Jeremiah text is exactly that kind of promise. Is God is saying, I've got you. Don't worry about it. It's going to be a while. It may not be your timetable. In fact, it's not going to be your timetable. But come on, mortal human. I'm God. You don't have to be in control. You shouldn't be in control because I know you and your tendencies, says God. So be at peace. Be able to surrender your control in order to trust God. Oh, I hate those moments. But they're so real and they happen so often in real life. I mean, in the, the, the space of a waiting room, when your loved one is going through a medical procedure and you can't control anything about it, that's a space where you have to wait and trust that God has it. The space of graduation, when you are getting ready to, to go into a new season of life and you don't know exactly what it's going to look like or how you're going to do, you got to trust. Or if you're a parent or a grandparent and you have a student or a kid that's going into a new season of life and they're like not in your hands and you can't control and you have to just trust that God has your kid. Or maybe it's a new job. Maybe it's a new transition season and you are entering into a new, a new way of existing and new doing things. Or if not a new job, maybe it's retirement can be another one of those spaces of, okay, who am I? What do I do? What's going on? Uncertainty. These are very real pieces where, I mean, one way or the other, you got to walk forward one step at a time. I would say pandemic has been a, a very frustrating experience of this exact phenomenon of trusting in God and letting go of our need for control. Even in the church, we're, we're coming into this church season where it's like, okay, we need, we're going to rebuild a lot of structures. We need to bring back a rotation of ushers and, and greeters and also rebuild for what we need and what the next generation needs. And, and we don't exactly know exactly what that looks like. And that's really scary in the in-between. And it's scary because we don't have our hands on it. And it's because it's not certain. And the gospel message, the scripture message again and again, is God telling us sometimes uncertainty is really uncomfortable, but, but that's faith. And I think, try to think about it logically, because I'm like, okay, why do I, like, why am I so much more comfortable when I know exactly what's going on? Well, it's, it's because it's obvious. It's there. It's in front of me. But scripture, again, it promises peace beyond our understanding. And I, th I think about the disciples in that moment where they were grieving and, and God was doing something so much greater in that resurrection moment. And, and it's possible that sometimes God is doing more than we can see or know. That that's when God says, I have plans for you. You may not know them, but I have them. And I, 
I know me personally, it's my struggle is often like, well, I don't want to mess up God's plan. <laughs> I don't want to do something wrong and then mess up God's plan for all of humanity. Because what if I go to the wrong school or I take the wrong class and then I won't meet the right person? And then if I'm not meeting the right person, then I'm not in the right relationship. And then the whole future of my family and the whole future of humanity from then forward and then onward. So it's like, whoa, okay, time out. Let's also remember that when God says, I have plans for you, it's not just for one individual person. This isn't God's letter to Jeremiah. This is God's letter for the whole community. The word of hope is that we are not alone in our confusion and God has all of us here. And so if you get to that space where you're like, I don't know what to do here, reach out to somebody else in the church and just say, pray for me because it's uncomfortable. But again, discomfort is that very space where we, when we're not in control, we turn to God. And isn't that the point at the end of the day is to turn to God and remember that even if we did have it all controlled and even if we did have all the answers and even if we did know it all, like, you know, our knowledge is incredibly limited even if we could know it all. And God is infinite. God is vast. And so, yes, there are times in faith that are uncertain and uncomfortable. So trust in God anyways. Name it and realize that that discomfort is something that we're likely to pull away from, but it may be that we lean in and say, yep, this is uncomfortable, and God is working. God has it. God has me. Behold, says the Lord, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for welfare and not for harm, to give you future with hope. When you seek me, you will find me. So to Jesus, when he looked down at the apostles before he left, he said, I'm not going to leave you. I will send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be my witnesses, even to the ends of the earth. There's no way that ragtag of apostles had any idea that their mission would become this here in Jacksonville in this moment. And yet God had them. And God's mission is going to continue unfolding even when we don't know what it looks like. So praise the Lord who is bigger than us. Praise the Lord who has us. Praise the Lord who will carry us through one step at a time. Amen.
does not move, God who is infinite, God who holds on to our smallness. May that God bless you and keep you, hold you and carry you through whatever the future may hold. May you go forth in trust and surrender and joy. Amen.